I'm Jochen Mannert, and um, I'm a physicist actually working at the Max Planck Institute for Solid State Research in Germany. My interests are novel materials, designing um, and fabricating and analyzing novel materials, maybe also novel materials with great properties, for example for electronics or for energy savings that up to now don't exist on, on the planet and um, we want to synthesize them and uh, find out whether they could be useful or not. And of course that's also intellectually very appealing and that adds a lot to the fun of it. I'm, I'm not sure whether why I've been asked to, to come here, but um, for myself I, I wanted to come um, because um, I'm obviously interested in, in how my research could be used, or the results of my research could be used in the end to, say, save energy or save resources. And if one thinks the problem through, it uh, turns out that research and new technology is one side, but um, probably even more important is um, what is done with the results and how actually, say, um, are people using energy and resources and there it turns out that there is um, I think um, quite some leverage um, to save energy and, and, and to save resources not by cutting back but just by not wasting it and um, I think I'm, I'm yeah and I'm seeing that that this um, meeting here at Talberg offers a great opportunity to discuss such issues and also meet people um, to who have thought about such things for, for quite some time. It, it's not so direct. So, so I'm, I'm doing, on the one hand, very basic research on quantum materials. And uh, I'm in, in physics, in solid state physics, it's exciting that on the one hand, this, this very basic research then is, is very closely connected. It's just two sides of one card to possible applications. And um, I'd like also to understand what these possible applications could be. Um, of course, with the motivation that in the end resources or energies are saved. And um, the, the big energy saving and the, the big impact in the end, if, if one thinks it through, requires actually that um, people are, are using energy or, or, or the technology that, that we try to provide. Um, in the best possible manner. Um, and um, of course I don't want to stop thinking at the point where a device is, is handed to a company and that's why I'm here, how um, in the end can indeed um, an impact be made and um, what actually would be needed from research. So this morning for example at breakfast I, I ran into a, a fun discussion with a participant from Uganda and um, I learned that for them a big issue is how to store electricity um, from day to night, that they can actually use their solar power generation, um, which they have during the day, to run their lights and their computers and their workshop at night, which is a very interesting issue, which about which I haven't thought about, you know, how to build such batteries or um, how to store the energy in such an environment for um, in such an amount for, for uh, such an amount of time, um, which I find inspiring, intriguing, interesting. Yeah. It's, it's very beautiful around here. It's very inspiring, um, certainly. Um, there's a, a large spectrum of people around here and um, the chances are really high that one runs into exciting people and chances are very high that one meets people whom one would never meet otherwise. Um, so this is a, a that respect a fantastic um, meeting here. Yeah. <laughs> well, there, there there are many facets to your several facets to your question. Um, one is. That, that may be the easier one, but it's already not not possible to answer it. Will research, will technology provide solutions to 
key problems that we have. Um, it's very hard to tell because it's it's almost impossible to predict what will happen in science over a time frame larger than five years. It's it's already almost impossible to do it for five years. But you know the research after five years benefits from the research success that has been done within this five years. So it, it it's almost impossible to predict. But if if I look back and look where science has been 40 years ago, what we are doing now and, and how people 40 years ago would have thought about the things we are doing now, they would have said, it's just impossible, you're crazy, it's uh, absolutely nuts. Uh, so if I extrapolate this, I think um, really a lot will happen in the future in, in technology. And I also think that the technology to be invented, which we don't know up to now, it, it will be invented, has the potential to be very useful to solve many of the problems that we have. Um, the main problem, though, will be, as it was in the past, whether there is enough common sense in, in the society, actually, to um, solve the problems just by common sense, uh, you know, with the additional help of, of high tech. And whether this common sense will be around, I, I don't know. Will be exciting. <laughs> Look, all, all high tech that we have at present, I think, would be good enough to solve all our problems. Well, yeah. I think that's a problem we have in science that, that people just consider us, you know, usually as nerds. It's just the image, which, which is true, but only for a certain percentage of the scientists. and. You know, we are <laughs> members of the society, people like, like everybody else, right? Yeah, exactly. We just have more and more fun doing science.